Hi, uh, this is Shankar and uh, uh, today I am going to explain you a very basic thing which we need to understand and uh, we do a lot of astrology without understanding uh, the first basic principles. The first basic principle is understanding planets. So Today I want to explain you about the planets and how to simply understand the planets which is very critical for predictive astrology. Now we have the planets and we should always segregate the planets to two categories. The what we call Dev planets and the non-Dev. We, we don't call them devil planets or evil planets. The one which are in the Devta category and one we can call them in a non-Devta category. Remember both are important in life. I mean when the Samudra Manthan was done you needed both uh, the Devs and the Rakshas. One held on one side of the uh, a string the other had the other side of the frame and there was churning and in only that churning they were both negative things and positive things including the Amrit, uh, Lakshmi everything came out of that but there was an effort of churning by both the sides the good and the evil planets. So let us understand which are the Dev or the good planets and the Dev or the good planets we would put as Sun, Moon, Mars and Jupiter. Sun, Moon, Mars and Jupiter, we would put them under the Devi categories. They are the good planets, positive planets, inclined to do uh, positivity. While uh, Mercury, Saturn and Venus are uh, to be put in the other category. They are not the devil category but where their intrinsic nature could be uh, a lot of little, little of deceit, little of negativity which is there. Which is, uh, which is why they are, in the, so we have two categories, Sun, Moon, Mars and Jupiter which are uh, naturally positive planets while as uh, in a very broad way while as Mercury, Jupiter, uh, Mercury, Saturn and Venus are on the other side. Now uh, all of us have read uh, Mahabharat, so while reading Mahabharat it would be a very easy way for me to explain the nature of these planets. If you understand the characters of these planets, you will be able to understand the nature of these planets also. Sun is like Lord Krishna. I mean, if you see the planet which represents Lord Krishna in his way of functioning, it is Sun is Lord Krishna. Moon is like Draupadi, the character in Mahabharata. The moon is got a lot of characteristics like Draupadi. Mars is like Arjuna, you know, the way. Arjun function, Mars is like Arjuna. When we talk about uh, Jupiter, then it is like Yudhishthir. Jupiter behaves, has got a, you know, the way the character of Mahabharata Yudhishthir is there. Jupiter is like Yudhishthir. Now Venus is like Dronacharya, you know, who was the guru of um, Arjuna, Bhim and Kaurav. He had his own um, issues in which, you know, he had a ill feeling against uh, Drupad and you know how he uh, took revenge with Drupad. So you know it is like Venus is like Dronacharya. When we talk about a Mercury you should think about Karan. Mercury's characteristic is like Karan. A person who Mercury is like Karan. So you know uh, the way Karan functioned in Mahabharata and when you talk about Saturn you have to get you have, have Duryodhan in mind. So if if you understand these characters of Mahabharata, I mean I'm sure anybody who is interested in astrology will also be knowing the characters of Mahabharata and you relate them to the planets, you will understand how the planets function. This is this was my way of uh, explaining uh, about the planets uh, to you. Now when we talk about planets, remember one thing that how these planets are basically, uh, they function like Sun is like a king, you know, staying in the palace. Uh, sun is a planet which only gives orders. It, it, it gets its orders executed. It is the king living in a palace and all the paraphernalia of the palace. Moon is like a queen and it's like uh, associated with beauty. It is also associated with being chanchal. It is also associated with, you know, gardens and, you know, jharnas and the river fall flowers, fragrance etc. So that is what moon is like a queen and it is associated with uh, those kinds of things. Mars is like a commander in chief and it is associated with medicines, weapons, so naturally 
a kind of engineering, it is also uh, associated with uh, medicines, it is also associated with winning. So Mars is like a commander-in-chief and those are the various other characteristics of, you know, way uh, a person of, a Mars-oriented person would be like this. Mercury is like finance, it's associated with business, finance, dealing with finance requires a lot of in intelligence, it requires communication, it requires some kind of deceit, it requires, you know, uh, throwing things which by which you get the right answers, it's speculation also. So Mercury is like uh, uh, like finance. Jupiter is uh, is is somebody who's associated with wisdom. I mean, Jupiter is a planet which is associated with wisdom. Somebody who's having a lot of knowledge. It's like a teacher. It's a preacher. It's got knowledge. It's got wisdom. It has got um, it has got an deep understanding of uh, things so that is what jupiter is and you know it doesn't live in the palace but it lives somewhere in the in in the in the in the silence of the woods silence of the forest where it is doing its research and uh, and development uh, venus is associated with with again it's a very important planet because venus knew the sanjeevani how to get um, you know, um, uh, dead, uh, how to make dead alive. But Venus was all, also, if you know the story of Shukracharya, I mean, which is associated with Venus, uh, Venus uh, for his own daughter, I mean, he was deceived by, uh, uh, with the love of his daughter, he was deceived by a Guptajar, a secret agent, had come from the Devtas and had actually learned the Sanjeevni mantra by. Uh, uh, by you know by having a relationship with the with his uh, daughter or you know uh, so that so venus has those characteristics where it understands uh, medicines it understands mrit sanjeevani it it is also gets because of love and affection it uh, you know it does not understand that a guptchar is there a agent is there so you know venus is associated with those kinds of things and it always helped uh, it also vowed to help the evil, the negative uh, elements which lived in the forest who were, who were the have-nots, you know, you can call them devils, you can call them evils, you can call them rakshas, but, you know, he always made them more powerful to go and uh, fight the people who had have. It is, uh, uh, it is, it is between the haves and have-nots, he was always, you know, uh, 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 making the have-nots very powerful and they become asuras, I mean. Anybody who stole wealth was known as Asura. Anybody who created wealth was known as Devta. So, you know, he created people who went there to steal the wealth of uh, the people who had the wealth. So understand Venus in that perspective. Saturn is energy. Saturn was, is the, is, uh, is, represents the masses. It is, it is, it, it's in the minds. It is in the labor. It is the people who work. So Saturn is a, a force which, if guided, can become very powerful so saturn is energy a raw energy which is not guided energy but generally it is associated with the masses the kings uh, people people who are ruled uh, the people who are uh, made to work uh, the people who just follow a particular discipline so it is it is associated with that kind of places and with those kinds of people so this is how you have to understand these planets and also when you're doing the predictions do take that into consideration one more important thing which one should understand is the two planets which I value a lot is Moon and Jupiter because Moon is by itself has no enemies. I mean, there is Moon has got no enmity. So it's all about love, affection, uh, you know, malleable nature. Now, you know, in a planet, how you see it, it can, you know, use that nature in a positive way or a negative way to uh, to, to get things. And Jupiter is another, another planet which is but wisdom which understands things and tries to um, tries to uh, you know do good and you know use its uh, knowledge for uh, various uh, purposes so these are two important planets which are very important mars again is a planet which i give a lot of importance and i would actually i put it in the in the category of benefit because without mars nothing can happen you know mars is the planet which gives you energy and remember one thing that uh, when I go in the next uh, this thing, I'll talk about aspects. Mars is a planet which, which, which uh, 
gives energy and that energy is that energy is pure energy i mean and uh, whenever mars aspects uh, whenever mars aspects saturn i mean the mars of aspect is on this on on saturn and it's a one sided aspect that is mars and saturn do not mutually aspect each other then uh, the energy of mars is used by saturn and it can be you know it it, it is very very positive that is if and when it is vice versa that is saturn is aspected by mars then you know it 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 is like energy which is misguided energy and it creates a lot of uh, it gets it gets people who rise but they fall so you have to understand that you know the mars and saturn combination it it is always very good whether it's a conjunction whether so it, it will create some kind of energy bombardment but it's if it is only one sided that is if sat if mars controls saturn in its aspects then these persons are the persons who become the billionaires the social reformers the people who do a lot of things and if it is vice versa that is uh, uh, saturn controls uh, mars then it could be a negative kind of thing where a person can become a very intelligent criminal he can become a dictator but you know it's a kind of a downfall so those things i will explain later in small uh, things of prediction which is there but when you look at these planets have have the nature of the planets in mind which i've tried to explain you in a very uh, very simple way and in a way by which you can relate and without understanding this you cannot do predictive astrology so this is uh this is uh, this is one thing which i wanted to tell uh, people through the videos that people forget the basics forget planets forget the nature of the planets and start into prediction now that is not correct i'll i'll in my other videos i will explain you more about strength of planets and you know certain tips which are very critical the basics which are very important that i will explain you in my other videos so uh, that is for uh, that is for now and uh, i mean i thought that i would uh, make this and i'm sure you'll find this useful the way i have told you and do let me know about it you can always contact me in uh, on my email id and uh, i'm sure uh, i i'm very confident uh, you 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 like it and you use it uh, and use it in the way i have tried to explain you in terms of understanding this planets in various ways i've tried to explain you briefly and succinctly thanks and uh, bye for now thanks bye